Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome back. So we are proceeding. Unfortunately, Mr. Badr Kalasi is not with us. So Mr. Dennis Yachin, uh, Mr. Dennis Yachin, who is the Director of Corporate Relations U.S. Uh, Ukraine Business Council, will be moderating today's forum. May I kindly call him to stage? So I will hand you the microphone. Okay, thank welcome. you. Welcome. And I just want to introduce shortly our speakers. Uh, this is going to be about Sorry, this is going to be about financing the rebuilding of Ukraine. And our speakers are going to be Vice President Banking Black Sea Trade and Development Bank, Mr. Hassan Demirhan. May he kindly come on stage, please. Welcome. And Matteo Patrone, Managing Director, Eastern Europe and the Caucasus European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. He's online. I think he can hear us. We will recheck afterwards. And then Asin Nazali, managing partner, Nazali Tax Legal, please. Can I invite him to the stage? Yes, it's coming. So thank you very much. The stage is yours. So Matteo, can you hear us well? Matteo, can you hear us well? Matteo, can you hear us well? Yeah. OK, super. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the panel financing the rebuilding of Ukraine. It's, it is a crucial of businesses in Ukraine. They are looking for ways how to get financing, how to find financing, how to rebuild the infrastructure, how to rebuild other areas in Ukraine. We would like to hear your perspective and your point of view on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, can you hear? Can you hear me well, Matteo? and the 
Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mattel, for your invaluable input. I would like to address quite the same question to Hassan Demirhan, Vice President, Banking Black Sea Trade and Development. All right. Um, thank you very much. Good morning to all, all our guests. Um, basically, um, as a development bank, multilateral development bank, usually very sensitive, this type of kind of um, destruction uh, or uh, fragile economies, let's put it this way. And um, we are, uh, as a Black Sea Trade and Development Bank, um, we have uh, also same experience we had uh, because, uh, you know, as Azerbaijan and Armenia also are member countries. So we show the same reaction during this conflict between these two countries. So what we are, what we are saying, um, as a development bank uh, owned by the multilateral or by the um, state, uh, multi-state uh, uh, entities, so we are very sensitive on uh, basically such a uh, fragile countries. Uh, of course, uh, in this case, not only the development banks, but, but also the European uh, uh, public financial institutions has been also very active, and they are the first one really taking necessary action uh, to provide financing uh, to Ukraine. In addition to that one, also EU countries uh, as a state in different kind of uh, sovereign funds, sovereign related entities, they provide the also financing. They committed to provide the fi uh, financing because they, you know uh, providing financing implementation takes time, but immediate reaction was a commitment uh, from the different institutions. So this type of, uh, let's put it this way, commitments has a different formats basically. One is the loan, a simple loan, and the second one is guarantees or unfunded kind of transactions. So um, mostly, especially European uh, sovereign entities, they, provide, uh, they provided unfunded kind of line of financing, let's put it this way, in, in a different uh, kind of way. Uh, the line of financing can be uh, unfunded and can be guaranteed it can be uh, trade financing or other uh, form of uh, guarantees, or can be uh, issuing the bond but guaranteed by the uh, basically sovereigns in the Europe. So uh, these are the reactions, <clears throat> what we have seen so far. But uh, one of the important things as a bank and multilateral development bank to react or to provide a loan, uh, usually it is expected to be a concessional. It's not like a private, uh, you know, fund uh, uh, kind of reaction. It's a concessional, means uh, to pri uh, the pricing is can be in donor, can be in uh, basically um, uh, principal amount. So uh, it is not not like a market-driven kind of cost or pricing of the loan. So that's the uh, important uh, difference between the private sector financing and the uh, multilateral uh, development uh, funds. So we, what is the, as a Black Sea uh, Trade and Development Bank, what is our role? What we have done so far for the Ukraine? <clears throat> First of all, we are 11 member countries. In our 11 member countries, Russia, Ukraine, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Greece, these all countries are our member countries. So, um, we, as I said, we have a good ex experience, especially in Azerbaijan and uh, uh, other cases, Azerbaijan and the Armenian cases. But uh, for this one, uh, we have a little bit further action we have taken because the scale of the economy, scale of the impact is huge. So, in this regard, what we did actually... <clears throat> Uh, since the establishment of the bank, which is, uh, which is around the uh, 1990s, uh, the uh, Ukraine is our member, major member countries. So they have uh, more than 14% shareholding, and also they have a, um, a management, a vice president level of management representative uh, in the board, uh, so in the, in the management. So, of course, they have also representative in the, uh, in the board as well. So, these also help to facilitate and also basically increase the, our exposure very rapidly, very fast, uh, especially in, in Ukraine. So, since the establishment, um, what I can say, we are a middle size of, let's say, a multilateral development bank. 
uh, since the establishment, we approved around more than one billion uh, US dollar uh, euro um, the, for the Ukraine, um, which is around uh, more than 12 percent, roughly 12, uh, 13 percent of the total exposure. So uh, this, of course, uh, this approval, board approval, has a different stages. Some of them is completed. Some of them is under the implementation. You know, in the different stage of the implementation. So what we can say that uh, uh, at this stage we can say uh, more than 50 percent completed project financing, uh, basically, in different uh, format, and uh, around 40 percent of uh, 1 billion. Let's put it this way: around 400 million. This is the rough amount, uh, which is currently under the implementation, or we can say it is pending for the implementation. So uh, this is an important uh, kind of exposure as a, a development bank. So uh, <clears throat> that's implementation. Uh, you know, we have uh, exposure in a different sector, but what we have seen actually, our expo exposure especially recently in the two major sectors. One is the energy, especially energy sector, and second one is the SME sector, in general SME sector. The SME sector became more important because of the COVID reaction, uh, especially we prioritized the SME sector of the before this conflict, SME sector in, in Ukraine. And uh, before the COVID, our major exposure was the, in the energy uh, sector. So when we finance, uh, we can finance a, basically as a single, um, uh, as a, we can finance the total operation of the project, or it can be syndication together with other uh, other financial institution. Major, mainly the other financial institution, again, uh, you know, multilateral development bank like EBRD and other kind of uh, mainly EBRD, I can say, but uh, also European Investment Bank. We have also other European uh, entities, financial entities. So, I mean, uh, the example that we, uh, we can share with you, we did with other uh, MDBs, I just want to uh, mention, uh, especially uh, Gulf of Takas and uh, Ringy uh, Bioenergy. Uh, so one of the important things that the major focus in the energy sector is the renewable energy. That's the important things. It can be wind energy, it can be bioenergy, it can be uh, basically um, the uh, solar panel uh, uh, energy sector. Uh, so these are the range uh, energy, in, uh, basically inculates, uh, and swash, uh, this kind of, uh, and also we are also very much engaged with the uh, Ukro Gas Bank uh, financing. That's also uh, very important for us. Um, uh, basically to have an exposure. So in this way, uh, basically, uh, we continue, we, we have done, and we will continue to also uh, support the economy. Now, this time, uh, as I said, you know, the priorities for the development bank, for the financing, can be uh, revised and changed. As I mentioned, for example, uh, before COVID-19, the priority were is the energy sector and also uh, environment because it is the, uh, because of the environmentally friendly and uh, also uh, you know SDGs kind of um, compliance uh, reason. So what we did, we revised during the COVID, and then we focus on more uh, you know uh, medium size uh, kind of uh, investments. So when we do this type of, especially uh, mid-sized um, sector or companies uh, or uh, micro-sized companies, uh, again, the major focus we, uh, we do through the line of financing, we reach out to local entities through using the, uh, the local banks like Ukraine Gas Bank, as I mentioned, or like you know, trade entities, trade financing entities. In, for example, uh, similar entities in Turkey, we have an Exim Bank type of uh, entities. We utilize this, that one to uh, reach out uh, these entities. So um, uh, we. Uh, so now it is the stage for us as a bank, basically to revise the priorities, which is we are revising now together with the um, uh, contribution of the board member as well as the management of the uh, from Ukraine. So what are the uh, basically stages now at this stage? 
Uh, the first stage we are now fo focus on uh, basically immediate action is the required restoration of the destroyed objects and breaches and life support system. These are the major focus and immediate action required for this financing, So, which is already uh, started. The second stage is also uh, basically, uh, uh, basically the con uh, construction or uh, resumption of the water, electricity uh, supply, and all other uh, in the uh, devastated territory. So this is the second uh, stage, but these are the very important uh, for us also to prioritize uh, during this time. <clears throat> the last stage, of course, which is a little bit long term, and it requires full-fledged infrastructure and the country, uh, country, uh, country level like agriculture and all other uh, sector. So these are the um, uh, major kind of um, uh, kind of priorities, uh, prioritization for us. So, uh, of course, uh, construction requires basically focusing on the uh, building materials, agriculture, food production, uh, metal uh, manufacturing. These are the, as a sector wise, we are focusing on this sector. The companies are operating in uh, this sector. So, uh, <clears throat> now, the issue is here, um, uh, basically, the focus, as I said, it's uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction because of the, the damage. It is not, uh, per se, a new kind of uh, immediate action, new building or new project, uh, per se. So these are the, uh, 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 the priority for us. But one of the another important priori uh, priority for us to make sure that new infrastructure is modern, digital, and in the line with the Paris Agreement. This is also very important. All these our projects has to be in the line with the Paris Agreement. Uh, this is also our uh, major uh, focus on that one. Now, coming back to the private sector, uh, foreign investor, private sector, foreign investor. So let's put it this way. Financing or investments can be a two way. One is the direct equity, uh, private sector direct equity. Another one is the providing the loan. So the direct equity investment at this stage, it will be very challenging. From It is expected to the private sector, it is challenging at this stage, which is, uh, so we have to be uh, uh, careful on that one. So the pri providing the loan from the private uh, kind of uh, sector, let's say uh, private banks, not government related or multilateral development banks, is, uh, can be also uh, reasonable, but uh, it requires some, um, basically, some regulatory changes and adoption of some regulatory changes in the Ukraine. For example, in this regard, um, what we have to do, uh, the major kind of structure is a public-private partnership type of uh, project financing. That's the important things. By this way, you can, uh, especially um, the public sector should take a certain risk. I don't want to go detail on the structure and all the things. This is another long story. But by this way, the uh, public sector, whether it is a, a you know, pu public entity or the banks, MDPs, they will take some portion of the risk and so that the private sector funding may uh, basically became more attractive, uh, especially in Ukraine. So um, this is uh, um, basically, <clears throat> so from the equity, direct equity investment, the private sector will be, uh, it will be challenging. And uh, for the other one, again, uh, it can be, uh, uh, basically doable, but it requires a legal kind of framework, uh, a good uh, uh, legal fr framework in, in place. Uh, so we are uh, actually, and also uh, at this stage, uh, the donor the type of financing is m uh, much more priority than a complete a pure risk adjusted or risk based kind of uh, financing methodology. So that's the that's the, at this stage also, we have to uh, take care of this kind of distinguish on, on that one. 
So bottom line, I just want to uh, summarize on that one. As a, a, a Black Sea Trade and Development Bank, uh, we are uh, very strongly supporting uh, the Ukraine, uh, basically for the recovery at this stages, with, which I mentioned. And we are uh, also stimulating, we are also engaging with other MDPs, working together with other MDPs, basically uh, in terms of like B loan, syndication, co-financing, the different type of way, so that we can diversify, that's the important thing, diversify the source of funding for the uh, Ukraine. That is our policy, of course. Now we are also uh, revising our strategy, especially, especially sectoral strategy as well. Thank you very much indeed. Hassan, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before, I, before, before, before we switch to uh, Ersin Nazali, I would like to to address the question to Matteo and to Hassan as well. We all understand that everything has limits, but what Matteo mentioned and what you mentioned as well, I mean, the infrastructure, the energy, the green energy, what kind of budgets, volumes are we talking about? Are we talking about billions, 10, 10, 10 billions, 20 billions, thousand, thousands? Uh, uh, let me be, let me put it this way: uh, the, the European entities, as I mentioned, uh, they uh, commitment so far. The European entities are not us. So over one trillion, I can say commitment, uh, over one trillion euro. This including the sovereign entities, the, the state, EU state, as well as uh, European funds and European investment bank, including whole Europe. It's roughly one, one, uh, more than uh, one trillion US dollars. It's not only a billion. Regarding the development banks, of course, when you do kind of uh, a commitment, you have to take care of uh, your capital uh, strength, your rating capacity, your abs shock absorbing capacity, and your limit. So, I mean, as a kind of a BSTDB, we cannot normally uh, have an exposure in a single member country more than 15% of the total portfolio. So this is the kind of uh, com uh, compulsory limit, which is also imposed by the rating agencies as well to maintain your rating. So regarding the, um, uh, so far the commitment we made, and it's around more than 15%, very sorry, 13%, so very close, very upper limit of the you know, uh, ceiling of the exposure limit for the for our, for ourselves. So I can say the uh, percentage, but I cannot mention the exact amount because the uh, it is exact amount is a dynamic. So every time it, it changes depends on your capital structure, your profitabilities, uh, your uh, borrowing, your basically size of the, your assets. So that's why the important things for us is to uh, stretch the limit, single obligor limit to the member countries up to 15% of the total exposure. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. Matteo, the same question to you. Please give us more clarity on what kind of budgets can we expect and can we, may I say, calculate, if I may say so. Uh, Matteo, you are muted. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Thank you, Matteo, very much. Uh, Ersin, two questions to you as you are the representative of the business. To, so, two questions to you. What kind of tools are you looking at in order to find a way to finance Ukraine? And a, a, a lot of businesses and governments and uh, NGOs, they are talking about how to get all those monies that were freezed by the United States, by the European Union, I mean the uh, Russian bank, I mean the Russian or the Russian money that were freezed by the European Union, European Union and the United States. So, question to you as to as you are the legal guy and the tax guy. So, do we have a chance to get it? Uh, thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, our, uh, we are representing many Turkish investors in Ukraine, and the finance is, as of today, is the most important point, actually. Uh, with respect to, to your last questions, from legal point, I think uh, it is not possible, uh, because uh, as you know, the, these assets in EU, US, some other uh, countries, and as you know, uh, from all part of the world, people flying to UK, because I have residence in UK at the same time, uh, they think that the country is a safe uh, region, safe place for everybody, actually. Therefore, uh, as of today, considering the international uh, legal uh, law, international law, and also the domestic law, uh, the assets uh, as of today state, I think it is not possible. But in practice, they it, it deem as a, a security against the uh, uh, loan or some other finance to be provided to by the Ukrainian because uh, in practice, uh, this assets is staying uh, as an idol, uh, I think. But uh, directly to your questions, uh, it is not possible as of today. Okay, okay and what about the first one? Uh, as of today, many of our clients continue their operations. Uh, and at the moment, uh, I understand from my uh, meeting with our clients in Turkey, uh, the other companies uh, in some different business are looking for opportunity uh, soon in Ukrainian. As of today, uh, in Turkey, our office is more, more than 250 people. We have five branch in Turkey. Uh, I can say that we are representing uh, many multinationals in Turkey at the same time, because uh, companies of Turkey uh, in uh, different parts of the Turkey. Uh, finance is the big problem because uh, even if you have uh, opportunity, if there is no fi uh, finance facility, it is impossible to, to continue their investment. Uh, we can divide uh, subject two part. One of uh, them is uh, heavy investment, which means construction, some other infrastructure investments. Uh, as you know, Turkey is a big country, but uh, total amount of such a budget needs international investment. In that time, uh, our clients at the moment started to making some, how can I say, lobbying activities in EBRD or World Bank or some other international institutions. Uh, and at the moment, I think uh, hopefully uh, the war uh, will end uh, soon and uh, they will uh, continue their current projects and at the same time they will start uh, the uh, new projects for the reconstruction of the Ukrainian. Uh, with respect to the daily business, daily business which means retail or uh, some other basic needs of the people, uh, many of our uh, clients continue their operations as before, even if there are some, as you know, the rockets fire or some other issues. Therefore, they continue this, its operations with their own capital uh, without any uh, foreign or uh, third party uh, facility. Uh, this shows the commitment of the Turkish business to Ukrainian, I think, and it will uh, didn't, it didn't end uh, because of the war or some other issues. Uh, when we discussed our clients, all, all of them say that we will broaden our business uh, soon, at the same time looking for other opportunities. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the same question goes to Hassan as well. Hassan, as you might know, as you might heard that uh, the Canada, Canada just changed their legislation in regards to the freezed assets. So do we have a chance to get the freezed, uh, the, the freezed Russian assets in European Union? or in, in the U.S. or elsewhere, as from your uh, banking point of view? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, um, Russia is the, one of the important uh, member countries, and um, just uh, new, uh, even the uh, nomination of the presidency time to time for the bank is Russian. So, yes, we have a, a significant exposure to Russia, and we are uh, basically facing challenges, especially for the repayments 
of the portfolio. Um, but um, because of the uh, having kind of multilateral development bank status, you have a certain kind of privilege, uh, let's say, to get the money back, uh, you know, a certain privilege. But despite of that, we're facing difficulties trying to uh, basically uh, arrange the, especially in our compliance office, um, some of the uh, using the privilege rights as a development bank. Uh, not only us, but other development banks as well, uh, also doing the same thing. Yes, we are facing the difficulties, it's very clear, but the size and significance of that one, it's very difficult to say at this stage. But what, what I can say, especially for Ukraine, a very, very important and also a very important for the um, fund provider from the credibility of the Ukraine entities. As I mentioned, we have uh, more than 1 billion exposure already approved for the Ukraine. This is a cumulative one. Uh, so far, uh, of course, there is no sanction, but all the entities we are working now, they make the repayments on time. Okay, That's thank you. That's very important, especially for the finance and the international financing community. That's very important to highlight. As this is the, a good experience we are facing. That also encourages you to further finance and take a further step for financing in Ukraine. That's also, I like to uh, underline and highlight these issues. Understood. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mateo, my last question to you. We have one minute left. So do we have a chance to get freeze Russian assets from European Union or the US or elsewhere? 